Hey E36 Fanatics, Steven here. Today I am replacing a tensioner assembly and probably an idler pulley, not 100% sure yet though, on my 96 BMW 328i. A rather easy job to do and pretty cost effective to replace the whole thing. I think I got the tensioner assembly for 50 something bucks and the idler pulley for like 30 something bucks the reason i knew it was one of the pulleys is that my the the front pulley system has been making some noise lately typically when that happens a lot of the times it's going to either be one of your tensioners or the idler pulley this car has 140,000 miles on it and neither of them have ever been replaced i'm about to be 100 percent sure that it's one of those two when i pull the belt off and spin the idler pulley and the tensioner pulley and uh, listen to it. The first thing you need to do to really to do this job is obviously you got to remove the cruise control box and then the air box which is really quick to do but then after that I like to to get some extra room I like to go ahead and remove the fan. Uh, it's really easy to do if you have the tool which luckily from a previous job when I rebuilt the coolant system on two of these cars I bought the tool it just makes it so much faster it's like 10 bucks on eBay and you'll end up you know if you own BMWs you'll end up using it a couple more times I've turned off the fan clutch and I'm just spinning it and basically what's going to do is it's just going to fall into the shroud over here and that basically gives me a lot more space to mess around with my pulleys next thing you want to do before you actually go ahead and relieve the tension is you're going to want to draw draw some sort of crude map of your serpentine path because it'll be a pain to put this back together and start looking on google to make sure your serpentine bath if you don't draw it my tensioner pulley which is which is this one right down here it is actually somebody tried to use a torx bit on it when it's a hit hex and strip the bolt on the inside so i can't even loosen it by the pulley i have to do it by the actual tensioner there's a bolt there's a bolt on the tensioner right over here which you can use to loosen the tensioner as well and that's what i'm doing and that bolt is a 16 millimeter so like i said here's my wrench um, it's on if you're pulley shredded you can do it this way it's on the tensioner bolt over here and I'm just gonna loosen the tension and get that belt off all right here's how I know that the uh, pulley is fried here's the tensioner pulley listen to it hear that noise and it's still spinning it just it keeps spinning and it's making a noise so the pulley's definitely gone. Now, here's the tensioner pulley, the new one. See how it doesn't want to spin at all? Just barely. These tensioner pulleys, they're not supposed to spin freely like that. All right, so to remove these hydraulic tensioners, it's pretty easy. 13 millimeter socket. There's one that's more difficult to get to at the very bottom, which is down where my thumb's moving at. And then there is one more, which is right here, which I already pulled. That's the easy one to get to. Uh, the way I got to it, to this bottom one right here to loosen it, is I used a small breaker bar with a long half inch or 13 millimeter, either one, same thing, and uh, an adapter to get to it. And that gave me enough clearance to get, as you can see, gives me enough to get away from the pulley and because I pulled the fan the uh, fan off it uh, gives me enough clearance to remove everything hey viewers so here is the old tensioner now don't get worried if you buy your new one and it looks a little bit different because they've gone through a couple of redesigns over the years first thing you'll notice is the old one has this stud here if it's the original this one here has none Secondly, this is obviously a hex. Uh, somebody used a Torx on it and stripped it somewhat, but this one right here is just a regular stud, so 
I mean, to me, this is a better, this is easier to work with. The other thing is, here's the really easy way to tell this is bad. See, it keeps spinning. It's got a little noise to it. Look at this. See how much it doesn't, it doesn't want to spin? Don't want to spin at all. This thing over here will spin all day. Okay, so our installation's really easy. Just get the tensioner, mount it back up. And get your studs hand tightened. The most difficult part about this whole job is probably getting to that bottom bolt. Once you got that, I mean, it's a piece of cake. Now, a couple other things to look out for while you're doing this. You know, take a look at your belt. If your belt's in good shape, then, you know, just keep it. But if, you know, if your belt's got a lot of cracks in it, might as well go ahead and replace both of them. Um, I know on this belt, I just replaced it about six months ago, maybe, and it still looks pretty new. There's no point in replacing it right now. Okay, once again, that bottom bolt is a real pain. The way I got it back on is uh, I used a wrench, just a half inch or 13 millimeter wrench. And uh, of course, the top one was easy to put back on. So now I got my new one mounted. Next step, you can either put the belt back on first or you can put back on your uh, your fan if you took that off. I'm going to go ahead and put the belt back on first. I think it would be a little bit easier to put on the fan afterwards because the belt's just kind of in the way. Once you've got the fan back on, remember that it's left hand thread and you simply just keep spinning it and then it'll lock. There it is. And you don't actually have to keep spinning it because it's self, uh, since it's left hand thread, it's self locking. So it's already locked into place at this point. Like I said, it's quite easy to do. Uh, there's also a tensioner for the AC if you want to, if that's also making some noise. But mine was just that, fortunately. 